ass off, right? You're a hard driver if they're. I think I think my mic's on. This is on. Yep. It's on. Gonna, gonna gavel this rowdy room. All right. Welcome to the Lake Bluff <coughs> School District 65 Board of Education regular meeting for November, November 13th, 2018. Um, Phil Hood will be acting as our Secretary of Pro Tem, but shall we go? We'll take attendance, please. Susan Ryder, absent. Phil Hood? Present. Mark Berry? Present. Leon Charlo, absent. Julie Gottschall, absent. Richard Hegg? Present. John Rosen? Present. All right, we've got a quorum. We can begin. So <coughs> you guys join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Now we offer the opportunity for public comment. Not seeing any. Uh, we offer the opportunity for board members to add an additional agenda item or a discussion item. If anybody would like to do so after the meeting, feel free to email myself or Gene. Moving on, uh, we have just one report from Mr. Khan, which is uh, on the update audit. on the audit, right? Just wanted to let you know that the final audit report is not complete yet. They're still waiting on TRS to issue their final audit report. Um, and so we'll, we will present the final audit probably in, at the January meeting. We're not in violation of doing anything by delaying this. No, right? we've, we've applied for an extension. The um, annual financial report, the governmental statements are done. This is just the, um, the audit report. Okay. Just like every other district too, because yep. it yep. impacted all, all of us. Boat. Okay. And maybe while Jay's up there, he can move on to his uh, tax levy and the debt service. We'll combine sure. both of those. Okay. So yeah, item seven on, uh, is the, for the discussion is a supplemental supplemental tax levy discussion. And this resolution will be on the December agenda for approval. It allows us to extend in taxes to pay the principal and interest on the working cash bonds issued against our debt service extension base. While this is not mandated mandated to do each year it's best practice so we'd like to do this a bit annually okay, so i'll first just talk about the tax levy we're here tonight because we're required to um, pass an estimated levy or a tentative levy 20 days prior to the passage of the final levy um, so i'll just be going through the recommendation um, the december cpi was 2.1 percent so that's what we'll be using in the calculation and that's exactly the same as it was last year uh, we're expecting equalized excess value of, of existing property to increase by 1.7%, which is about half of what it was last year. It was 3.2% last year. And then um, this is a regular assessment year. So the county applies a um, equalization factor to all the property to adjust it for um, EV, EAV differences. The uh, new property is two and a half million, and uh, that's somewhat in line, maybe a tad bit less than historical new property. And then uh, this long, long term projection, um, just the assumption in this projection is that we continue to levy the CPI increase every year. And so you can see that um, with moderate. Um, wage increase and benefit increase assumptions and um, about $300,000 of capital expenditures a year in our capital plan. Um, if we hold our levy at the CPI level, then our, we, we keep our um, ending fund balance within uh, pretty much flat and within our 30 to 50% target. Just a quick question. Since every year, anyone looking at that chart mm -hmm. who has any knowledge of how to recharge is gonna say, gee, what's the big bump in those two years? Can't you subtract out the anomaly for those two years to uh, so that we avoid having to explain what those are. Um, you mean like between the six and the six point seven here, this this bump over here. Between 2015, 2016, our expenditures are way above our. Oh, our yeah. Revenue. I mean, this is all funds. I could do um, just operating funds, and that would exclude. Because that's an anomaly capital. that doesn't occur. You can put an asterisk in there and explain that that occurred, but otherwise, it raises a lot of questions for people. Mm -hmm. Who don't understand why there's such a spike in those two years? We can present only operating um, funds, 
if that makes more sense yeah, to me it does i don't know or how you, the others feel maybe you do it that way and we also on this one put a square right where the two red big ones are and right mm -hmm. out just wide to show it is yeah, capital something spending. like that just it just for the you it's know, a good people point to understand and it's a good point to help people understand but i also because we've already had it out there i just being a transparency freak and i get worried about well, you having something out there and then not having it out there? That's why it might be better just to take this, Jay, and put a square with an mm -hmm. explanation right next to it. You can do that. Sure. Instead of at the bottom, because then when people look at it, the answer is right there. Yeah, if you Capital do that, spending. I would suggest you normalize those two years and show where it would have been without those incremental. Yeah, kind of like we did we do with the budget um, yeah. presentation yeah. where you can yeah. break right. it out. Right. Sure. That makes sense, yeah. too. And then... Um, So the recommendation is to ask for a CPI increase, to keep our fund balance in the desired range, and to grow our revenue and pace with inflation. Uh, as you know, we've got some uncertainty coming up, and we, this is um, so we want to keep things stable. Uh, this will allow us to continue to address our facility needs over time, <clears throat> and will preserve our, our PTEL base for future levy recommendations. And then the final recommendation, um, this is what we shared again last time, uh, no change. So our, we're expecting our EAV to increase 1.7% to $675 million uh, with $2.5 million of new property. So a 2.1% or CPI increase would give us an operating um, tax extension of $15.3 million. Uh, an additional $56 million would come from new property. And then um, we added an, another $34 million um, just for rounding into account and just to make sure we get all of the um, taxes on the new property. 34000 just so people know. Yeah, 34000 on $15 million. So that's I, see, a, I thought you said 34 said million. Oh, did I say $34 million? I'm sorry. <laughs> 34000 um, So, yeah, small amount. So it give, would give us a total operating tax levy of $15.455 million or an operating tax rate of 2.266 per $100 of assessed value. Um, that's a, two, a total 2.7% increase for operating taxes. Our debt service um, extension will, by schedule, go up by 1.3% to $2.2 million for a total tax extension of $17.6 million next year, <clears throat> uh, which is a net 2.5% increase in a tax rate of 2.55. So the bottom line is, do we have any questions on the actual <clears throat> levy recommendation this evening? Well, the tax rate, that should not be a negative 0.2%? Um, Down from 258 to 255? Yep. And the other numbers are all positive, so right. just put a couple brackets around that. So the overall re extension represents a 2.5% increase from last year. Correct. Yeah, in the two including our debt. That includes our debt service overall. Yep. Right. Okay. And you'll be voting on that shortly. But while we've got this up, I'm going to have Jay explain the supplemental debt service levy. Yes, this is something we did last year. And um, as I have said, for our debt service, um, the county just automatically levies what it takes to pay the principal and interest or the debt service payment on our debt service for bonds um, where we've issued them with a complete schedule. But the way we issued our, our um, building bonds for the middle school, we issued them against our debt service extension base. So that was a fixed number. So we were only allowed to levy the debt service extension base every year, but that goes up by CPI every year, so they don't know what it is. So we basically have to re pass a resolution annually to tell them what the CPI is and to give us the authority to levy it, um, up to the CPI increase um, so that we can levy enough to pay for our, our interest and principal on the debt. That gets complicated, huh? Yeah, another, we, we issued the debt assuming that's some CPI, so the debt service payments increase annually, but we can't um, levy for the full payment if we don't increase the debt service extension base by resolution. Not that there's any opportunity since bond rates are going up, but it, are there, do we have any outstanding bonds that will be uh, 
out there for potential refinancing? We have refinanced them all, yeah, and we actually did it at the right time because, as yeah. you say, bond rates are going up, and we would have missed out yeah, if we had we not done it. You did it at the right time, and it's all even out. Right. That no, took you see that. a couple years and a lot of work on all of your parts increase, on that. Increase, so. In fact, uh, December is our last payment on the 2008 bonds that were from the elementary school. The rest have been refinanced, so we'll have one de debt service um, issue go away after December. Cool. Good. Any questions on that for the discussion? No. All right, so we'll move on to We're action ready items. for action items. Thanks, Jay. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you, Jay. sir. Our first action item is the approval of the tentative tax levy. <clears throat> Let me read a little something that goes along with that. <coughs> this process of setting a levy as completed annually must be approved by a school board prior to the last Tuesday of December. Levies are tentatively approved the month before to allow time for public notice. The term property tax cycle includes the entire annual process of the board adopting a property tax levy, submitting that levy number to the county clerk, and receiving the distribution of property taxes from the county treasurer. The cycle can be easily compared to the seasons in a year. In the winter, December, a property tax levy is approved. In the spring, by June, county clerks process the billing statements for the property owners. In the summer, the county treasurer distributes the property taxes collected from the first installment payment. In the fall, the second installment payment is distributed and the cycle begins again. Any questions or discussions or comments on that? So I have a motion to approve the 2018 tentative levy. So moved. Second. Uh, roll call vote, Ms. Go. Morozen? Yes. Hag? Yes. Hood? Yes. Barry? Yes. The motion is approved. Item B is the approval of the annual statement of affairs. School code requires that school districts are uh, must complete the annual statement of affairs and publish in the local newspaper all salary schedules and vendor contracts over $2,500. School districts uh, and joint agreements are also required to submit the completed electronic form to the Illinois State Board of Education, excluding payments of $500 to $990. The ASA must be published in the local newspaper no, longer, no later than December 1st annually and submitted to ISBE electronically no later than December 15th annually. The ISBE will publish the ASA on the ISBE website by January 15th of the following year. Um, anything you want to add to that, Jay? We do this every year, right? Anybody else have questions or comments or concerns about that? Anybody? We have a motion to approve the 2017-2018 Annual Statement of Affairs. Move. Second. I'll roll call vote, please. Hag? Yes. Hood? Yes. Barry? Yes. Morosi? Yes. Motion is approved. Item 8C is the approval of school and district report card. The district report card must be approved by the board on an annual basis. Anybody have any questions or comments on that? The administration want to add anything to that? No, uh, we'll be spending a lot more time on the district report cards and our comps and our student achievement at the next meeting. Okay. We have a motion to approve the 2018 school and district report cards. So moved. Second. Uh, all, in favor, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That motion is approved. Uh, item 8D is the personnel report. Two names on that report this month. We have a non-licensed retirement, retirement for Vicki Beschel, a technology spe specialist in the district office, effective December 3rd of 2018, and a licensed re resignation of Robin O'Connor, a drama art teacher, a dramatic art teacher at the elementary school, effective November 29th of 2018. Um, and I do want to add that Robin is resigning. She has to. She was on the ballot for Lake County Clerk, and she won. So she's taking over her responsibilities December 1st. Oh, wow. Congratulations. Uh, so I have a motion, we have a motion to approve the personnel report for November 13th, 2018. So moved. Second. Roll call vote, please. Hag? Yes. Hood? Yes. Barry? Yes. Morozen? Yes. Motion is approved. Item E, the consent agenda, contains the usual minutes and financial reports. Also included in tonight's agenda is approval of a resolution for a two-day unpaid suspension for Kathy Sheffer, with the, uh, our attorney said that could, should be put in, the, in that agenda. So tonight's uh, agenda includes open session meeting minutes for October 23rd, 2018, closed session meeting minutes for October 9th on, and, uh, and October 23rd, the treasurer's report, the impress report, the bills report, the P-card report, and a resolution authorizing the suspension of teacher Kathy Sheffer without pay. Um, any questions? Anybody want to pull anything out of that to be discussed separately? So, I have a motion to approve the consent agenda for November 13th, 2018. So, so moved. Second. 
Roll call vote, please. Hood? Yes. Barry? Yes. Morozen? Yes. Hegg? Yes. Motion's approved. Uh, didn't have any. Uh, item nine was uh, freedom of information request. We didn't have any. If there's anybody who'd like to address the board of public comment, please do. Not seeing any. Any other comments from the board? Administration. So we may have a motion to uh, adjourn at 7 uh, 18. So moved. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? We are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. It's smooth. <laughs>